Dracula by Liz Lockhead. Adapted for radio by Liz Lockhead and John Foley. Part one. and you're not finished dressing. What can you be thinking of? Catch me. I will not. Oh, be careful. Oh. <laughs> Look at your petticoats now. Oh, never mind them. Here, lace me oh, up. Well, turn round. Tighter, mm. tighter. I'll hurt you. No, you won't. I want to feel it nip me in. The day they put me in stays and made me wear my hair up, I swore blind. If I was to be pinched and skewered, I was to have the thinnest, thinnest waist and the highest, highest hair. I'm not going to suffer for nothing and not be noticed. Hold still. What if Jonathan sees you like this? <laughs> Maybe I'll get him to come and gawp at me in my drawers. Lucy! <laughs> oh, wouldn't that give him a sight to remember? What are you going to give him before he goes away? I don't know what you mean. Well, he is your fiancé, for goodness sake. You are practically married. We are not practically married. It's weeks and weeks yet till my birthday. And him going off on such a long journey. And when he comes back, we'll be married. There. <clears throat> That's as tight as I can. So, what are you going to give him to remember you by? My likeness in a locket. Oh, I wish I had a Jonathan. Mm, hands off, little sister. He's mine. And do you hear any moment? So hurry up, Lucy. Do get dressed. I wish I was waiting for my wedding dress to come from Paris. I wish something would happen to me. Oh, it will. It will. Behold, the bridegroom cometh into the life of a lovely Wilhelmina Westerman, <laughs> elder sister of the lynx-eyed Lucy, enter. Ta-da! Jonathan Harker, tall, dark, handsome, blue-eyed, article clerk extraordinaire. You read too many silly romances, and anyway, my Jonathan's passed his exams. He's a fully-fledged solicitor now. And don't you forget it. <laughs> now, come on. I once, I once, I once knew a woman, knew a woman who, I once knew a woman who swore a fly. <coughs> I once knew a woman who swallowed a fly. Perhaps she'll die. Perhaps she won't die. But to die or not to die, that is the question. Bedlam. 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 Bats in the belfry. Bats. Set of screw looses. Screw looses. Screw looses. Screw looses. It's cold. Getting colder. Dr. Seward. Sewer, sewer, sewage! Lord Muckmine, Mr. Piss River, Dr. Seward, you bastard! Calm yourself, Mr. Renfield. I'm here. Swallow this opiate, sir. It'll make you more Lucy. Lucid. 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 She would. She swallowed the cat to catch the bird. She swallowed the swallow to catch the spider. She swallowed the spider to catch the fly, but I don't know why. Dr. Seward, I feel empty. Come, swallow. <laughs> Well, that's it. You'll soon feel better. Empty. They took me, deliced me, shaved me, insulted me with lie. They wormed me like a dog and they wired me up to their bad machines. Really, Mr. Renfield? And what sort of bad machine? Fastened wires to my temples. My whole head is a temple for my master to come and worship. He's coming in his warship. My master that I worship is coming in his warship. The bad machine took the current of my memories away. Now I'm empty. I feed on no life. And no life feeds from me. Ah! To catch a, catch a, catch a fly. Gotcha! Really, sir, that's disgusting. <laughs> it's fat with life, strong life, and it gives life to me. Very good, very tasty, very wholesome. I know a doctor who should try some. Ingested insects. Life! <laughs> life! Uh, Nurse Grice. It's Nisbet, Dr. Seward. Nisbet? Ah, right. Well, take a note. Uh, I recommend that Mr. Renfield's medication be continued, increasing by one milligram. Good God. Good God what, Doctor? What? Oh, huh. 
I thought I saw someone through the window. Someone I knew long ago. Yes, look. That man there in the grounds next door, taking photographs. Probably a house agent, Doctor. The place has been empty for... The... No, I do believe... Yes, yes it is. Jonathan Harker, down there in the grounds of Carfax. Orderly! Orderly! What on earth is Harker doing wandering around next door? Yes, Doctor. Uh, Mr Drinkwater, will you please go down and tell that man taking photographs of Carfax that Dr Seward... No, that Seward Major requires the presence of Harker Minimus in his study forthwith. Sir? Go on, man. You know exactly what I mean. Major Help me, Dr. Seward! Help me! Why the devil anyone would want to photograph that architectural monstrosity is utterly beyond me. All right, Nurse Nisbet, uh, female ward now. Uh, any problems? Nothing. No, don't leave me! Don't go! Doctor! Doctor! They put things in bad stuff. Puss, piss, just bad blood and mother's milk. It opened up my head to him. You got to help me or he get in. Doctor, if you leave me alone and scared, I won't to let him in. God help me. I don't want to let him in. I just couldn't believe it. Seeing an old Norwellian in this neck of the woods. <laughs> Imagine my surprise. The face of Norwell's strictest prefect. Strict, but fair. Oh, a monster, whose voice could send a score of little boys scurrying to butter his crumpets, sugar his tea. How many terms did you fag for me, Jonathan? What, oh, two or three? I must have been a perfect beast. Your health. And yours. Mm, excellent brandy, mm. by the way. And uh, now... Harker Minimus is engaged to be married. I read the announcement in the Times. I am. Congratulations. I suppose she is a beauty. The loveliest girl who ever lived. And the heir to quite a fortune. Oh, I should marry Mina if she hadn't two brass farthings to rub together. Well, my dear chap, I was only teasing. <laughs> but you've not married then, Arthur. Ah, uh, Jonathan, when I was 20 and hard at my studies, I thought I'll marry at 25. At 25, I thought 30 is a fine age for a man to settle down, and now I'm 30. Well, don't leave it too long, old chap. Well, I hope I won't. But what woman, though, would marry into a madhouse? Plenty do. Ah, yes, but my wife would have to do it knowingly. I'm sure you work far too hard, Arthur. You should take a holiday. Have you still got some annual leave? I seldom bother to take it. Well, come with me. What? I mean it. You'll enjoy it, I promise you. Tonight, I catch the overnight train from King's Cross to Whitby. Mm. Look, I'm a day later than promised, but I will get a prodigal's welcome. I'll be with my darling Mina for four or five days before I go off on my business trip abroad. See your foreign nobleman. It's Count Dracula. And you've actually managed to flog him that monstrosity next door. <laughs> a very desirable property. Carfax. Bit too gothic for my taste. And does your Count know that his soon-to-be next-door neighbours here are somewhat... Batty? Well, <laughs> the house agent did not think it strictly relevant. <laughs> <laughs> Poor man, he doesn't know what's in store for him. On the night of the full moon, when the lunatics... Do they really? What? Does the moon actually affect them? <laughs> no, not at all. Sheer superstition and old wives' tales. Mm. No, I'm afraid that all the clinical, if not the neurotic, mental illnesses are merely the result of imbalances in the complex chemicals in the brain. This Dracula fellow will find we have our inmates tame and docile, and not at all antisocial as neighbours. But you will come. To Whitby. Oh, Arthur, you must. On one condition, that you don't let my Mina make a busman's holiday of it for you. She has a little sister, Lucy. A sweet kid, really, but Mina worries terribly about her. Last year, after their father died, Lucy went into a sort of decline, got terribly thin and somewhat feverish in her behaviour. Did she have a loss of the normal female functions? How on earth would I know? Oh, forgive me. As a doctor, I forget how to address laymen. Probably simple girlish hysteria. Nine times out of ten, rest, companionship, some exercise, physical and mental, and wait for little Miss to grow out of it. But will you come? Oh, why not? Yes, <laughs> let's go. Uh, first class, though. Uh, allow me to organise the tickets. Mrs. 
manners. It looks lovely. Thank you, miss. I'll be in the kitchen if you need me. All right, Flora, you may start serving. Yes, miss. Mm. There we are. Oh, you're spoiling me. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I'll face going back to hospital food again. <laughs> then don't go, Arthur. Now hold still, everyone. Oh, Jonathan, not another photograph. Flory, <laughs> hold still. Yes, Mr. Jonathan. <laughs> you are obsessed with that camera of yours. Well, you wanted to look so lovely, and I wouldn't want to take so many pictures. <laughs> Thank you, Gloria, that's enough. Leg or breast, Mr. Jonathan? Hmm? The chicken, sir. Leg or breast? Oh. Um. Oh, could I have a little of both, please, Flory? Certainly, Mr. Jonathan. Miss Lucy? Um, no, thank you. I'm not in the least bit hungry. Uh, Lucy, you really ought to try a little. Uh, for me, Lucy, please, just... I'm not hungry. Well, I jolly am. Mm, it's delicious. Well done, Flory. All right, Flory, you may go. Yes, miss. Mm. And, Jonathan, you may stop staring after Flory like that. You make the poor girl blush. Sorry. Honestly, Arthur, Jonathan has taken so many photographs of the poor girl, he'll turn her head. Oh, she's very pretty. I mean, as a photographic subject. Well, you won't let me, and Lucy won't keep still for me. It's boring, Jonathan, always being in your sights. So, Arthur, you've not wearied of our company yet. I'm delighted we can amuse you. Oh, Mina, I have spent three of the happiest days of my life here with you. Mm -hmm. And Lucy, the sea air is like champagne. <laughs> oh, Arthur, very salty champagne. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now, Mr. Redfield. Drink up your medicine. The Dr. Seward won't come back and bring you a nice stick of rock from the seaside. Hope oh, no. not. There's a good doggy. Oh, right in my face, you bloody bastard. You stupid, stupid cur. Kick him, drink water. Kick him from dawn to dusk and back again. Oh, oh I'm scared to. Kick the living daylights out of you. Nurse Christ, no. Sitting there among all these bird cages with feathers in his bloody teeth. He should not be allowed. This is a madhouse, not a menagerie. Kick him, drink water. I can't. I can't do it. My master will bless you. He'll punish you. Yeah, My no. master is at hand, and I'm here to obey his every command. See the moon. You see the moon, Mr. Drinkwater. How sweetly she sail. She wax once, she wane. And my master, my master, he shall come again. Oh, yes, Nurse Christ. He come. Goodness, uh, and me, me. I sit with my birds in the wilderness. Pretty birds, little victims, pretty ones. How they do flutter. A struggling sacrifice. Ice nurse grace, in the ice, that you cut in the heart, that you a little flutter. No, bastard. Mm -hmm. No wonder I'm not coming to your cell alone. Mm -hmm. Drink water, I'm reporting you for disobeying my orders. And him, feathers in his bloody teeth eating sparrows. All right, who's next? Proper in the wilderness. I am. His prophet in the wilderness, proclaiming his coming. I'm sorry to be so possessive of Jonathan, Arthur. There's so many decisions to be made. Oh, I hate making decisions. <laughs> Don't I know it, Jonathan? Mm. Honestly, Arthur, you'd think a brilliant solicitor would be able to choose between red roses and white for the floral arrangements. Arthur, don't you have something to tell me? Red roses, white roses, common daisies or <laughs> weeds. I hardly see how it matters. As long as you marry me, Mina. Soon. <laughs> it's soon, all right. I meant for us to have had more time together, but I've been a rather bad host, Arthur. You've not been finding it too difficult to amuse yourself, I trust. Indeed not. Lucy and I have been walking, riding. Bird watching. Yes, indeed. <laughs> but the views from the cliff tops are exhilarating. Yes, and yesterday I went bathing. Arthur swam so far out, he got smaller and smaller till his head was just a little dot in that heaving grey sea. <laughs> I got frightened. Oh, I screamed. Dear Lucy, I was perfectly fine. I'm a very strong swimmer. And my sister does get very nervous about things, Arthur. Oh, yes. Crazy Lucy. Mad, sleepwalking Lucy with her migraines and her over-vivid imagination. I know what you say about me behind my back. 
You bitch me now. I wish you weren't my bloody sister. Lucy, Lucy, sit oh, down. I'll leave her, Jonathan. She is only after attention. Well, shouldn't she get some? Arthur, can't you do anything? She had tantrum. Well, Arthur? I'm afraid I cannot take on Lucy as any kind of a patient or give you any advice of a medical nature concerning her for personal reasons, for ethical reasons. I don't see why. I asked her today if she would consent to be my wife, and she said yes. Arthur, <laughs> you old devil, I had no idea. Nina, isn't this the most wonderful... My sister, Dr Seward, is not quite 18 years old, a child. Someone of your age and experience must see she is far, far too young and unstable to enter into such an arrangement. Yeah. Miss Westerman, I am sorry to spring this news upon you. It must indeed be something of a shock. Well, I hope you will learn to approve of me and to see that your sister's health and future happiness are my every desire and concern. I love her. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll go to my fiancée and see if I can be of some comfort to her. Lists and flowers and frocks. Mm. Who cares? Well, Mina, let's run away. What? Marry me in London, then come abroad with me. And you can be my secretary. Uh, but my inheritance. Until my 25th birthday, I... I don't care about the money. We don't need it. I can make my living as a solicitor. Enough for us both. Marry me tomorrow. You must be mad. I'm just being silly. You are right. It's all this wedding business. Oh, Jonathan, listen. Please don't go away tomorrow. Don't go on this trip. Don't. Mina, whatever is the matter? Such dreams, Jonathan. Such horrid, horrid dreams. And premonitions. Uh, I know you think I'm just being silly, but... Mina, my love, let me come and sleep with you tonight. Jonathan! I'll hug you close and keep all the bogeyman away. Oh, Jonathan, we cannot. Not here at Hartwood. Mrs. Manners would know. And Cook, and Flory, and Lucy, and everyone. I'll sneak into your room after everyone is asleep. No. Damn it, who cares if they know? I love you. Let me love you. We must wait for our wedding. Mina. No, Jonathan, I mean it. You can come and stay with me tonight if you promise you won't go away tomorrow. I can't do that. Mr. Hawkins has entrusted me with all this vital business with the Count. It's my career, Mina. God forbid you should jeopardise your precious career on my account. Mina. And now I'm going to see my sister and her... fiancé and make apologies to them for my behaviour. I pray she may be happier in her betrothal than I am in mine. Mina. And don't you dare come after me. Go away. Go away. Mr. Renfield, it's me, Nurse Nisbet, with something for you. Don't you fancy a little something? I'm not hungry. It's unusual. I thought she was always hungry. Take a bit, do. <coughs> Must be famished. Clever get doctor putting you on starvation rations. He don't care. Dr. Seward, sir, Mr. Renfield ate another sparrow. Mm. He did. <laughs> Coughed it up not half an hour later in a pool of puke and blood and feathers. <laughs> Experimenting. Dr. Bloody God Almighty, eh? Seeing how far you'll go. Well, stands to reason. There's just no knowing how a man will do if you give him nothing. Sick as a dog, poor lamb. Who had cut Robin? I wouldn't care. My head is Only it's me got to clean it out. A sobbing, now then, sobbing, sobbing. It's a lovely bowlful. It's not a lot, and it's not hot, but... Take it away! Oh, look what you've done! Bloody soaked me! You madman! That's the last time I ever tried to help you! <laughs> Spider to the fly. Perhaps you'll die. Or not. Would you care to dine with me? Die with me? See, it's not nice eating dead things. Not nice to take a bite out of something that can't bite back. I call that necrophiliac. Now, 
something blood heat. That's what I call sweet. If it moves, eat it. <laughs> yes, come into my parlor, said the spider to the fly. <laughs> Welcome. Enter of your own free will. Come freely, go freely, and leave some of the happiness you bring. Jonathan Harker, how do you do? <laughs> Let me tell you, sir, I am very, very pleased to see you. My journey has been a nightmare. Come, welcome. Liberty Hall to you, dear friend. And remember, what is mine is yours. It wasn't storms and lightning fit to split the sky, and wind, and the wolves. You should have heard them. Harker Jonathan. I beg your pardon? Oh, <laughs> apologies. I used my country's habit of putting the patronymic first. Jonathan. <laughs> Mr. Harker, my friend, you are evidently one of those who have ears to hear. Uh, oh, <laughs> oh, no, forgive me. I have manners of a barbarian. You are hungry, evidently. Sit. Eat. Thank you. Paprika handle. It is among our peasantry, something of a national dish on feast days. And the day you deliver yourself to me, that is surely a feast day. <laughs> yes, certainly. <laughs> Let me fill your glass. Taste. Mm. Ooh, very good. You're not dining yourself. I have supped earlier. But I will serve you with pleasure. <laughs> Is good? Incredibly good. Mm. A strange seasoning. Do you know? I've been making quite a collection of recipes here, which I hope Mina will establish with Cook as staples in our household. Have you ever tasted robber steak? Mm -hmm. It's bits of bacon, beef, onion, a mushroom or two sometimes, and it's sort of skewered onto sticks and simply... No, I do not care to eat this robber steak. Uh, my appetites have grown capricious in my old age. Not everything agrees with me. Nevertheless... I know what I like. Hmm. Simple things. Ah, let me look at you. Oh, don't be unnerved if I seem to drink you in. Forgive me if I seem rude. I am so long starved of young company. Tell me, this my Carfax is fine castle? Castle? Oh, forgive me, Count Dracula. A letter from Mr. Hawkins. Well, here you are. A Carfax is... Uh, you have seen the photographs I sent you. A substantial mansion. It has the potential to make a very fine home. And every Englishman's home is his castle. <laughs> Don't you say so? Well, I shall make me a fine Englishman. Carfax... A strange name, hmm? from the French, you say? Mm. Such corruption of language interests me much. Catrafas, four sides. Well, I suppose there are at least four sides to every question. Is that not so, Mr. Harker? Certainly. Mina would say that's the trouble with me. I can see something to be said for all of them. So you cannot make up your mind? Then perhaps one of your friends will have to make it up for you. I beg your pardon? Oh, forgive me, my friend. As I say, I lack society here and make you uncomfortable because I have lost my lightness 
of Tanj. So who is this Mina? Your wife? Oh, almost. We're to marry next month. You have a likeness of her? Some pictures I took in the garden of a house they have at Whitby. Whitby? Oh, it is by seaside. Oh, yes. It's a fishing port on the Yorkshire coast. It's rather a fine resort. Interesting. It's really a rather remarkable house, actually. Remarkable girls. There are three of them. Now, which is your Mina? She's the one in the middle. Ah. And that's her sister, Lucy. Oh, they are not alike, these sisters. Mina and Lucy? Oh, good Lord, no. <laughs> Chalk and cheese. But she looks familiar, this Lucy. Almost I feel I know her. She has Slavic face. Yes, I have to agree. The first few days in this country, I seem to see my sister-in-law and every other serving girl who brought me supper. Very disconcerting, I can tell you. And who is the third flower in this English garden? Oh, that's their new maid, Florrie. Local girl. Very pretty. Three pretty maids all in a row. <laughs> and you, Mr. Harker, you have picked the queen among princesses. A proper English rose. Is wonderful thing, this photography. Well, I'll take your photograph. Tomorrow, when we have the light, you'll... No, so... Mr. Harker, you will not take my photograph. I am too old and dry to say cheese and pose before your magic gadget. Believe me, it simply won't turn out. You find my country beautiful? Oh, very. Such changes of landscape and climate, even. Extraordinary. Yeah. Good. And my people? A fascinating mixture. They seem full of good qualities, but very superstitious. Folklore, my friend. Write it in your recipe book. Fascinating mixture. <laughs> <laughs> mixture is true. You are at the heart of Europe. In the deeps of the dark forest at its black, black heart. My country is a whirlpool of blood. Now, oh, there have been so many battles here on this soil. Well, you have a phrase, I think. Flesh is grass. I wish to turn this upside down. Here in my country, the grass is flesh. I hope we're done with wars and bloodshed. And surely as the 20th century dawns, mankind will see sense. The 20th century? Bah! I despise this 20th century. It disgusts me. It hasn't even begun yet. Habsburgs, Romanovs, Mongols, upstarts. My race, Jonathan. My house. We sacred of the noble line of Dracula. The little dragon. We always gladly will receive the bloody sword. One would think you've been present at all these battles. To a boyar, the pride of house and name is his own pride. Their glory. His glory. Their fate. His fate. Well, I'm afraid I feel that a man must absolutely make his own way in the world, whatever. Ah, democracy! The warlike days are over. Blood is too precious a thing in this time of dishonorable peace. Yes, I must move again. Among men. But you can divert me. My friend, you can tell me traveler's tales and... <laughs> Take me out of myself. I don't know that I can. I'm exhausted. Sorry. So long on the road. Trains, coaches. I even travelled a day by farmer's cart once, when my train connection missed my more than five hours. Oh. His wife gave me this. Pressed it on me. Uh, Wouldn't take no for an answer. Throw it away! It's ugly thing! <laughs> Ugly? Well, it's not as handsome as some of the crucifixes I've seen, but it was so kindly meant. Oh, no, I simply meant, my friend, that it was lead, base metal. I am somewhat of old snob. I cannot bear what is not old and fine and beautiful and precious. And that is why I live here all alone with my wonderful memories, the splendid spoils of my ancestors. So if you would throw this ugly peasant thing out of the window, I'd replace it with gold. It was a gift. Given in good faith, I must keep it. Oh. 
If you did not have such a warm heart, you would have little to offer me, my friend. Oh, oh your Mr. Hawkins writes well of you here in his letter. Energy, talent, discreet, silent, a ah, faithful disposition, which has grown with him into manhood in my service, and will, I am fully confident, put itself to your every use and render him malleable to your every instruction. Huh? So, tomorrow morning you will write to our friend and tell him, and everyone else who would desire word of you, that you stay with me one month. A month? But the business we have together certainly cannot take more than a few days to complete, at most. But, my friend, I want you for conversation. Conversation? Your wonderful English language, it is a living thing, yes? I do not possess it. Oh, Count, your command is admirable. Dry. Library dust on every syllable. I know words, but not always how to speak them. Your English is excellent. <laughs> Through my books, well, my friends, whom I love, I have travelled all over your great country without leaving my own armchair. The rush of humanity, its life, its change, its death. All that makes it what it is. Oh, books are good, but I like the living tongue. I am no philologist. I would not have you so. I want you because you are young and ordinary. Oh, splendid specimen of the upright young man. So, when I drink in your every word and digest it, I shall put on my straw hat and come out from the garden of my Carfax, a real English man. Count, I cannot stay with you. Hush, no such thing as cannot. Sleep first. In the morning, believe me, you will be different. You won't feel the same. If there be one axiom in human affairs, that be it. Ah, listen. The children of the night, what music they made. They curdle my blood. Come, come, Mr. Harker. Blood is not so easily curdled. In the nursery, perhaps, tales of the big bad wolf might, how do you say, scare the pretty child witless, but a man whose heart has wintered enough for him to be worth something. He hears the wolf sing to the moon, his own sometime desolation, and it quickens the hunter in him, so in his mind he runs with that grey pack in the night. Can't you see them flowing like a ragged wind over Russia, over the steppes, outside in that black forest? Their eyes are more than the stars, and twice as secret. They ringed our coach. The horses screamed and stopped. Stock still. And I looked out and saw them in the black moonlight. White teeth. Red tongues. Shaggy hair. The dogs of nature. The other passengers were frightened. There was a girl there. She was terrified. So I held her close. She taught me words. Or dog. Satan. Vokol, Stregoika, Vrolok, Vulkosolak. She said, Vampire. Yes. Satan, Hell, Vampire, and so on. Ah, oh, my friend, girlish superstition. I am sure your reason tells you so. But I overtire you. Come, come, you shall make your toilet, and I shall make your bed for you. Oh, no keeping of servants in this place so deep in the woods. So I, my friend, will play the valet or the chambermaid, whatever you will. And, oh, you are so tired. Tonight I wish you no dreams to disturb your rest. Ah, Jonathan Harker, you have had a long and difficult journey, but at last you reach your destiny. Destination. Ah, you see how I need you for a teacher? My dearest Lucy, 
Scarcely have I had a moment to write to you since I returned to London and the asylum. Those sunny days with you on the cliff tops above Whitby seem so far away. As soon as Jonathan returns from this business of his and Mina has had her wedding of the decade, then perhaps we can plan our own more modest nuptials. The main thing is finding exactly the right somewhere for us to live. Nearby, of course. Dr. Stewart, can you come? It's old Renfield. Lord, what is it now? He's in a terrible state. We just don't know how to handle him. He's been at it again with them flies, feeding them to the spiders. Now he's running up and down the walls and tearing their webs down, flicking his tongue in and out, catching them, swallowing them, sickening. And he's insisting we call him the lizard. The lizard? That's a new one. But look here, drink water. Can't it wait till I... I don't think it can, sir. Not without him doing himself an injury. No, you really have to see this for yourself. <sighs> My dearest Mina, I write this in the ever-growing fear that you may never get to read it. I'm using our private code so that should it fall into the hands of Count Dracula, he will not be able to decipher it. My host, and you both keep up the fiction that he is my host and not my jailer, is very knowledgeable about law in England. We spend long candlelit evenings in the library, working on his affairs. And I begin to apprehend that the reason he had Hawkins of Exeter arrange the purchase of Carfax is to avoid anyone in London knowing anything whatsoever about his business. And the fact that he seems so sanguine about me being fully aware of his business can only mean that he's not worried about my being around to make connections. Indeed. I am now convinced that he does not intend me to live. Oh, Mina, this castle, my prison, is on the edge of a precipice. A stone falling from the window would fall a thousand feet without touching anything. And then last night, I was in my chamber, looking out of the window in the moonlight over the endless expanse of treetops, when my eye caught a sudden movement on the castle walls below me. I saw, and writing it now, I almost begin to doubt myself, but I promise you it was no dream. I saw Dracula emerge head first from a window and move vertically, face downward, over that dreadful abyss, scurrying stop and start in quick bursts, exactly as a lizard does down a wall. Mrs. Manners has asked me to ask you, Miss Mina, if there's any news of Mr. Jonathan. No, no news. I'm sorry, miss. Tomorrow, perhaps. Flory, are you happy here? Happy? I haven't thought to think, miss. I hope for you to be happy. Yes, miss. I'd like for us all to work together, like a family. Yes, miss. Call me Mina. We want but one year to the start of a brand new century. Times are changing, Flory, and we'll have no more mistresses and servants. I don't believe in them. No, miss. You will still pay my wages. <laughs> of course we will, silly goose. No, it's just... Well, you'll have noticed that my sister is a little odd sometimes. I want you to help me with her. Yes, miss. Mina. She has a shadow on her lung. Such night sweats. You must have noticed how thin and pale she is, and last mm. winter she coughed up blood. That's why my father bought this house. The sea air here and so forth. Poor Papa. He did not know how ill he was himself. Lucy took his passing very hard. Mm. And he'd have done anything to make her well. Well, he was right to buy it, miss. Whitby air's a famous curative. A right tonic, them sea breezes. <sighs> Dr. Seward says we have to be very careful. 
We must keep our dear Lucy away from the chills of the evening or the dampnesses of dawn. <laughs> Lucy? <laughs> Why can't they let a girl marry three men at once, or at least as many as want her? Three? <laughs> Poor Edgar Homewood asked me to marry him yesterday. He was so sweet I broke his heart. And now, Quincy Morris. Oh, Quincy! <laughs> I am so sorry, but I am promised to my darling Arthur, whom I love more than all the world. I should have thought you'd have enjoyed being so proposed to, Miss Lucy. <laughs> I am so miserable. Oh, there, there. Really, Lucy, don't be so shallow. Shallow? I'm sorry. I'm not quite myself, forgive me. I'm going for a walk. I'll go past the post office and see if there's any... Oh, look at the mess in this room, Flory. For goodness sake, tidy it up. Yes, miss. You mustn't mind Mina, Flory. No, miss. Sometimes she's a little odd. Almost abrupt sometimes. Sharp. But she is upset. Naturally. All this time and not a word from Jonathan. But she means well, Flory. You do know that. We're both terribly pleased with you. Yes, miss. We didn't think we'd find someone to do for us. Oh, as always, someone will do. Your suitors will find that out, Miss Lucy, never fear. You might even find yourself insulted how quick they forget you. I don't think so, Flory. No, Miss. And for heaven's sake, change those flowers. Lilies are so funereal. Something pretty to cheer Mina up. I'll look in the garden. Don't believe in servants. Oh, don't you? It's very interesting. I'd better look in the mirror, Flory, my girl, and pinch yourself to see if you're real. Who do you see in a moonlit mirror? A prisoner? Certainly. Jonathan Harker, with dark circles under his eyes from lack of sleep and such... Dreams. Am I going mad? Ivan. <laughs> oh, seven years of bad luck, don't they say? You are comfortable in Castle Dracula? You sleep well? You dream well? I don't understand. You came right up behind me. But in the mirror, I saw nothing. Is possible? No, I think not. What kind of man casts no shadow? Oh, but sweet friend. You have cut yourself while shaving. This pretty little ruby trigger. It ran down your white throat. Don't touch me! Cheap toy! You have not thrown it away yet. My crucifix? I wear it for the woman who gave, gave it. it for luck. Ah, Jonathan is very sentimental. You be careful how you cut yourself. It is more dangerous than you think in this country. Count Dracula, you have to let me go. But you know how I love to have you here. Stay just till the morning. Count Dracula, please. Oh, but certainly. If you are uncomfortable here, you must leave at once. You let me go? Of course. Come with me, quickly. Here is my key. Take it. Open. <laughs> well, goodbye, my dear friend. As they say, welcome the coming, speed the parting guest. I... <sighs> what, you do not go? Oh, let's sleep on it, huh? No, 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 no. Keep the key. Remember, what is mine is yours, my friend. Oh, but let me advise you, sweet Jonathan, do not try the locked doors. Sleep only in your own chamber, because... Here, as elsewhere, there are bad dreams for those who sleep unwisely. And now, I will walk with my friends. Good God. Come! Those wolves fawn around his feet. Oh! And he melts with them into the darkness. I have this key in my hand, and it is useless to me. Oh, Mina, Mina, Mina. Well, I just sang any food, any feeding, feeding, drink or clothing. 
Come dame or maid, be not afraid. Poor Tom will injure you. I've got to get away. Tomorrow. I must leave now. Go on, sister. You are first and we shall follow. Yours is the right to begin. First bite of the cherry. Yes, young and strong. Me first. Me. Me. Me first. Shall I leave you some? There are kisses for us all. Such a sweet sufficiency. Give it to me, Jonathan. To me. To me. No, Jonathan. To me. Are you? Who? How dare you cast your eyes on him when I have forbidden it? Back! Back! All of you! Give me that key! Give! What do I care for your key? What do I care for your boy? Have you? You yourself never loved! You never loved! You cannot love! Yes, I too can love. You know it yourselves. You can tell it from the past. Is it not so? When I am done with him, you can kiss him at your will. Now go! And us, are we to have nothing tonight? Suffice? <laughs> oh, a snack. In a sack. Something's moving. <laughs> you monster. Nothing to swoon about, surely. Someday, perhaps, you will understand. But for now, sleep till morning. <coughs> Bastards. <coughs> Bastards, tie a man up. Squeeze him in a street jacket. Will you only sing a sweet song out loud in their fat faces? But they'll see he's coming, coming with a host of furious fancies. Whereof I am commander, with my burning spear on a horse, I fair through the wind and the sun. Those women, was it a dream? Who were they? Oh, their breath on my neck. I felt I knew them, but their eyes were cold as ice in the very depth of winter, and I wanted them. <laughs> now in the clear light of morning I fear them even more than I did last night. Oh, Nina, my love. I had the key in my hand, and I traded it for the first hint of a kiss from those... Miss Mina, for me and Miss Lucy. It's still so foggy. Please, Mina, it's beautiful. I think just another layer of the Brussels lace. Yes, just peeping out from under so there. So horribly foggy. Can't see where the sea ends and sky begins. A brule, that's what we call such a fog. Spoiling for a storm, I reckon. Jonathan. Mr Hawkins said not to worry. He's had communication that Jonathan will have finished his business in a day or two. Why doesn't he write to me? Probably did, and it got lost. Foreign posts. You'll get five letters all at once. You'll see. It'll be the fog delaying the ships. Mina, my love, do look at this beautiful dress. How I envy you. It's a dress. Your wedding dress. 
Oh, Lucy. I don't think I'll ever wear it. Then the Lord he loves a bedlam and scuttle sweet and dainty. Poor Socky, darling. The saints the whole bloody day. And all through the night and all. And a lovely yell, mate. Master? 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 Master, 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 master. Faster, 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 faster. He is coming. Master! Last night, though, such a storm. Down at the dairy this morning, everybody was all agog about that ship. Nonsense and superstition. No, but one dead man lashed to the wheel. Hand stiff round a crucifix. Ooh. Its chain wound so tight, it cut clean through to the wrist bone. Ooh. And in his pocket, writing about how our ship was haunted. One by one, sailors overboard or eaten. Must have gone mad. Oh, but oh, what a tempest. And the air this morning is so sweet, you'd think it'll never be dark again. But that black dog. What black dog, Miss Mean? Lucy thought she saw a black dog. I did. As the boat struck the shore, it leapt off in a single bound and away over the cliffs like a black wind. Miss Lucy, you all right? You do look pale. Oh, I've got my monthly visitor. Must have come in the night. My friend, my bloody friend. The curse. Oh, Miss Lucy, why didn't you say so? Do you feel poorly? Oh, cruel, that's what some of them cramps are. Do you want to lie down? I'll bring you herb tea and a hot water bottle. Oh, nonsense, Flory. You've got to learn not to give in to such weakness. Exercise. Like the doctor in the Ladies' Home Companion recommends. Swedish calisthenics. And no whinging, or the gentleman will never treat us as equals. No gentleman need ever know. Don't you always feel... Unclean? Mm. Friend? <laughs> friend? How queer, some friend. Indeed, Miss Lucy. And it's many a woman is pleased to see such a friend. Miss Mina! Oh, good gracious! Miss Mina! Mrs Manners! Whatever is the matter? <gasps> this letter just come here. <gasps> it's Jonathan's handwriting. Open it! <clears throat> well? What's he say? Uh, he's safe. He's safe in Budapest. Oh, I'm right glad to hear. Oh, I must go to him, Flory. Pack for me straight away. Miss Mina, I don't think you should go. Well, he's been ill. He's in a convent hospital in Budapest. The letter is from a doctor there. But Jonathan's added a message in shorthand for me. He's been very ill. Where is Budapest? You can't go off to foreign places all on your own. I'll come with you. No, of course I must. To Jonathan, to my husband. Miss Lena, are you sure? Of course. My darling is safe. <laughs> oh, Lena, I knew it. I knew everything was going to be all right. <laughs> oh, Miss Lena. <laughs> He's very quiet this morning. After all these shenanigans last night in the storm, I should bloody well hope so. All that screaming, moaning and rocking back and forth. Drives you round the bend just watching him. Hey, Mr. Enfield. If it wasn't for that bloody great lightning bolt, probably still be at it. What happened? You didn't hear it? Split that huge oak tree next door right down the middle. No. Like a bolt from hell it was. 
I soon shut you up, didn't it, eh? Mm. Eh? No, no, don't wake him up. He looks so peaceful. He's whispering something, though. Listen. As far as I'm concerned, Mr. Bloody Renfield can whisper away till he's blue in the face, as long as I can't hear him. Come on. Let's see what all the other loonies are up to this morning. <laughs> oh, oh, my lord and master. You are come among us. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor. I won't be gone long. Sit chloric, nurse. A triple dose. Thrice daily. Yes, Dr. Seward. You leave me, and I want to let him in. Be reasonable, man. It's not as if you're my only charge. If I was reasonable, I wouldn't be in here, would I? Well, I suppose not. Don't go to her. Mr. Renfield, my future bride is not well. I must go to her. Now, try to calm yourself. Uh, All right, nurse. Thrice daily. Don't days. go! Thrice daily for two, and then oh, twice let him in, and that'll get you. Gone! No, no. Oh, sweet Lucy in the daylight, so polite. You let him in, and that'll get you. That'll get you, poor Dr. Seward. No need to carry all the way upstairs, Arthur. I can walk you now. Nonsense, Lucy. Don't you like being wrapped up in my arms? And you're light as a feather. Now. <clears throat> I'm putting you in bed because the sun's going down and I don't want you to get chilled. I was watching all the swallows gather under the eaves. Where did the summer go, Arthur? Once your sister comes back, maybe we can send you away to some spa. Florrie, come in. Florrie's to give you a warm sponge bath and make you comfortable. Stay, Arthur. I'll come back later once you're settled. All right, Florrie? Yes, Doctor. Hmm. Now, Miss Lucy... I'll check with my elbow and see it's not too hot. I'm not a child, Florrie. And take away that bloody mirror. I can't bear to look at myself. Once we get the roses back in your cheeks... Don't light that lamp! Why ever not? I can't hardly see beyond my own nose. Because of all the pretty furred and feathered things. They fly into the flame and singe their wings. I had this dream. No, not quite a dream. I suppose I was asleep. And something long and dark, with red eyes like the sunset, and something very sweet and very bitter all around me. And then I came back, and you were shaking my body. I was above you, and I saw you do it before I felt it. Oh, Florrie. Bad dreams. But every night, scratching, flapping at the window. Moths at the pane, a loose sash rattling. Maybe a rat got behind the wainscot. Bogies is all kinds of things. I'm frightened, Florrie, and I think you're frightened too. No. You're sad. Why are you so sad, Florrie? Do you miss your sweetheart? How do you know I've got a sweetheart? I know things, Florrie. Is he a gentleman, your... lover? (laughs) No, miss. He's a soldier. What's his name? Jem, miss. Jem. You're precious. I suppose he's all right. Sometimes. Do you let him love you? How do you mean? How many times do I have to tell you I'm not a child? Is it nice? Well, I suppose it must be, else it wouldn't be so popular. (laughs) Is it absolutely the most sweetest, delicious, swoony, magical thing you ever... It's very strange. Very ordinary. When he goes, will you miss him terribly? I suppose I will, but he hasn't gone yet. I'll start missing him tomorrow. But there's all night tonight, isn't there? Yes, there is. I didn't like to ask you, miss. Of course you can. (laughs) Thank you, miss. (laughs) Our secret. Just don't dare come back till after breakfast tomorrow. (laughs) (laughs) Go! (laughs) All decent. Can I come in? Arthur, of course. I got you some roses. (gasps) Mm, They (laughs) smell wonderful. (laughs) Florrie, get a vase, will you? Yes, Doctor. Oh, and Florrie... She's still terribly pale. Yes, sir. 
I've written to my old professor who lives in Amsterdam. I've asked him if he could come urgently. Nothing. I'll get that for us. Just asking how her patient is doing. If you want to know about my bowel movements, ask me. Right. Did Flory make me pretty? Do you love me even though I'm sick? Or because I'm sick? Lucy. Well, I sometimes wonder. Thank you so much for the roses. I do love them. Mina and I used to gather up all the petals in the garden when we were little and put them in a jar with rainwater and try to make perfume. <laughs> Here we are. Did you ever do that, Flory? Try to make perfume with rose petals? Oh, I should think every little girl did, Miss Lucy. <laughs> After we'd left it a week, it always festered. So then we'd turn it into poison. It was better fun making poison than perfume. Don't you think anyone would rather? <laughs> no, I think we'd all prefer the perfume. <laughs> well, there's easier, of course. There. Don't they look lovely? Oh, yes. Well, off you go. And remember, I want you back when we agreed, and not one moment sooner. Do you hear me? Yes, miss. Night, miss. <laughs> Night, doctor. What was all that giggling about? Nothing. Oh, Arthur, do take me back to London with you. I want to meet all your lunatics you've told me stories about. Lucy, you know I can't. Not yet. And professional etiquette forbids me to breach the confidentiality of my patients. Besides, some of the stories would terrify you. Maybe I want to be terrified. Lucy... I do hate it when you try to protect me all the time. Well, I love it, but I hate it too. Tell me the story of mad Mr. Renfield again. You know it already, but I don't remember telling you his name. Tell me again. I thought it was so scary and funny. Go on. You went into his padded cell and saw that by spreading bits of rations, he'd attracted hordes of flies. Great, bloated, buzzing beasts with sapphire on their wings. And the next time you went... It was spiders, and the fattest spiders he'd fed on the fattest flies. I didn't tell you this. And one week later, tamed sparrows, spider-fed. And the next time he went, he says, Dr. Seward, please, please, can I have a little pussycat? <laughs> Whatever possessed me to tell you such an appalling story? Arthur, stay with me tonight. Oh, darling, of course. I'll stay with you all evening, and Florrie will be on that cot there looking after you all night. No, you. Want you want you to sleep with me, please. Love me all night, Arthur. I'm so terrified. Lucy, you know I cannot possibly do that. You are ill. I can't take advantage. It's not fair of you to ask me. Arthur, look at me. Lucy, dearest, cover yourself. Put your nightdress back on, please. Don't leave me alone, I beg you. Uh, Flory will be here. She'll watch over you. She won't. She can't. Lucy, I'm going now. Once you're asleep, I'll sneak back in and kiss you. Alone. And so... So... <gasps> Lucy! 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 Oh, my love of all my lifetimes, it's you. I know you. Yes. Open the windows. Let me in. Yes. Lucy. My love, please come in. Some ordinary Thursday morning. My fat pocket watch with its everyday tick telling me, remember, remember, 9.30, the university, the anatomy lesson, as regular. And then, friend Arthur, 
Your letter arrives. Your letter, Frank, express from England, addressed Van Helsing in your doctor scrawl. Your letter, which as I tear it open, makes a tear in this ordinary morning. And in my coffee, I smell blood. The lady fades. Seward, the doctor, does every proper test for every rational disease. All negative. The lady fades. Seward, the lover, despairs. Arthur, dear friend, I come. And, old enemy, I come. So now I pack the paraphernalia of my tray. Instruments, stethoscope, and garlic, consecrated wafers, and my crucifix. Why? Why did he shave it? Oh, my lovely hair. All gone for health's sake, Miss Lucy. Daddy always loved it long. Dr. Arthur thought he had to do it. Honest. Bleed the cold and shave a fever. What an old girl you are, Miss Lucy. Said he loved it long and loose and me looking like a little schoolgirl. Who did? Daddy. Arthur. Someone. I forget. Dead and coiled in a box. Who? Loved me like a schoolgirl. Wonder if he'd love me like a little boy. My big, fat, chopped-off braid in a cigar box. Glossy as... Flory, go get it. Don't want him to have it. Cut bits off me. It's mine. Mine. Fetch it. Arthur's desktop. I want to fling it in the fire and see it shrivel. He said I was to be sure you slept. Mina. I want Mina. You can't have her. No one knows where she is. Read it to me again, Flory. Mina's letter. I can't read, miss. Forgot. Someone read it to me. Who read me? Want Mina. Dr. Arthur read it you over and over. You ought to know it off by heart. I do. Heard it so often. Tell me it, Flory. Dear Lucy, I'm holding my darling husband's hand <laughs> and we're going to run away for a whole month and hide in some secret cottage <laughs> on a mountain in Switzerland and it'll be all the honeymoons I ever wanted. Please you and Arthur be as happy as Jonathan and I. All my love, your Mina. Dearest Mina. Flory, do you think we will be? What? Happy? I hope so, miss. Where's Arthur? He's gone to the station to collect his friend, the professor. Oh, yes. Flory, I want to go out for a walk. On the cliff. With the dog. I, I want to walk in the graveyard. Miss Lucy, we beant at Whitby anymore. We're in London, don't you remember? No. Dr. Seward brought you here, where he can get the specialist to come and cure you. Oh, yes. Are we in the madhouse? The asylum, miss. The madhouse. All oh, the world's a madhouse. Flory, Flory, what's the matter? You should be happy. Can't read. Don't need to read. Telegram from the military it means just one thing. Dead. Dead, you bastard. Torn up bits of you all over some patch of dirt or the side of the world. Bloody soldiers. Bloody generals. Bloody empire. And me three weeks late. Crack a dawn again. Another bloody fit. Well, sure, nice and quiet now, aren't you, Renfield? I've told Seward. Dawn and sunset, I said. Foaming and jerking, yeah. regular as clockwork. Does the good doctor ever listen? So what happened last night, then? He only escaped again. No. Nurse Nisbet went in about half past nine or so, and all she sees is his feet as he goes head first out the window, bare arsed in his <laughs> nightshirt. <laughs> Where'd he go? Only next door. What, you mean Carfax? That's where they caught him. Pressed up against that old iron studded oak door, cooing like a dove through the chink and whispering, Master, master, I'm here to do your bidding. Blimey. I'll tell you, drink water. When you've been in this job long as I have, you'll know as well as I do. Religious ones is the worst. Right. I'd rather have ten Napoleons, three Cleopatras, <laughs> and an Alexander the Great any day than the religious ones. <laughs> How are you feeling, my friend? 
a curious sensation. Yeah, to feel the life blood flowing from your veins, transfusing vital energy into her you love. Oh, yes. yes, a most curious sensation. But will it work? It would appear so. Already there is color coming back in her cheeks. If only we knew what the problem is. No organic or functional cause. There I agree with you completely. Much blood loss. Yet she is not anemic. This disease, whatever it is, interests me much. And these recurring dreams, I mean, bats, <sighs> black scratching, <sighs> the sunset. Hush, my friend. She is coming too. <sighs> Lucy, dear lady, welcome back to the living. <sighs> oh, just lie still, my dear. Everything is all right. Arthur, I think perhaps that is enough for now. Mm. I'm going to take the tubes out, so no sudden movement. And, um, <coughs> and now you, my dear. No, no, lie still. There. Oh. All done. Mm. And now, I think, Arthur, a glass of port, don't you? Yeah, lovely. Here, drink this. Thank you. Arthur, mm. Arthur, darling. Uh, no, no, don't try to sit up. Oh, oh, oh. What, my dear? Oh, you, you, you want me to uh, loosen this? Uh, mm. uh, these marks, where did they come from? Oh, such lovely dreams. I could feel you all around. Miss Lucy, so... how long have you had this wound on your neck? Flory scratched me. With a pin. It was an accident. Lucy, were you hiding something from me? I like to wear this velvet at my throat. It is a fashion that I like. Arthur, I do want to get well. Excellent. Then help us make you so. Wear that pretty black velvet band if you wish, but I want you to wear this also. Ugh. I don't like crucifixes. They are so... Morbid. Nevertheless, Lucy, I ask you, as you love Arthur, or as you love your own sweet self, to wear it. But of course, Doctor, if it means so much to you. Wear it always. And here are some pretty flowers, too. Here's a garland for your counterpane. And here, Arthur, hang this wreath by the window. I... And this one on the bedhead. I say, is this necessary? These flowers are medicine. Take my word. If you say so. And this garland here, Lucy, is especially for you. I want you to wear it round your shoulders. Pooh, it stinks. These flowers are as rank as common garlic. Much virtue in a common flower. Do not question. Just trust. Tonight, even if the room feels so close you think you're stifled, do not open the window or the door. All right? All right. Good girl. Good night, darling. We'll talk in the morning. Good night, Arthur. I'll send Flory in with beef tea and maybe just a thimbleful of that port that put such heart into your intended. Good night. Well, what do you think? Arthur, if we can get your lovely girl back to her ripe health, and old Van Helsing here will kick up his heels and dance at your wedding, never mind his old bones. <laughs> the blood is the life. devil you've come you are awake then help me flory i i can't breathe i brought you some beef tea and port wine too i want to give you a present oh, it's valuable flory if you don't like it you can sell it and buy things for the baby when it comes <laughs> or buy a ticket to go over the seven seas to find jem's grave why do i care about a grave he's dead but how did you know 
told you about the baby? I never told a single soul. Flory, it's pretty. It's a crucifix, Flory. Are you a Catholic? No, miss, I'm nothing. It's too heavy and ugly. Take it off me, please. Oh, miss Lucy, I'm sure it can't do you no good to get so worked up about a bauble. Of course I'll take it off you. <sighs> it's not that ugly. And all those flowers, throw them in the dustbin. All right. And open the window, please, Flory. Clear the air. There. Is that better? Yeah. I'll throw these stinky old flowers away and see you in the morning. But don't forget that tea I brought. You've got to sip every drop, mind. It's full of goodness. Night, night. This maiden took more than a trinket. If you're talking about the crucifix, you may take it back. I never stole nothing from no one. Miss Lucy gave it to me. I didn't want it. I know. <sighs> Lucy. Mina. I want Mina. Arthur. Why couldn't you save me? I, I didn't, Arthur, prepare for another transfusion. Arthur. Yes, of course. Flory, and her sister and her husband, they have traced them yet? No, sir. They've been trying every way. Is Miss Lucy going to die? Nina! 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 Oh, for the love of God, Van Helsing, tell me how to save her. She is fading, Arthur. No more blood. to me. Come with me. Kiss me. Oh, yes, my love. No, Arthur. <laughs> Let me go. No, Arthur. Not for your life. Flory, help me. Hold him back. No, don't you see what? No. <laughs> Lucy. To Van Helsing. Thank you. My true friend. And his. Guard him always. Save him and give me peace. I love you, Arthur. I wanted to get well for you. Thank God. Kiss her, Arthur, on the forehead, and once only. Oh, my love. Oh, 
she is dead. But it is only the beginning. <laughs> Mrs. Harker, do you know what I'm looking forward to? No. What does it begin with? L. Hmm. Is it, um, loving Nina to bits on Nina's big fat goose feather bed? <laughs> no. <laughs> My wife is insatiable. <laughs> no, actually, it's lunch. Lunch? Oh, you. <laughs> mm. English Sunday lunch. Roast beef, no garlic, no herbs, no foreign muck. Just a dab of mustard and a couple of Cook's best Yorkshire puddings. Mm. Mm, you are a monster. <laughs> I say, isn't coming back the nicest part of going away? <laughs> you better get a move on. Platform five, come on. How has he been, Nisbet? Very quiet, sir. Really? Great gaps in my notes here. I have to get back to filling some of them in. Nurse Grice and drink water and everybody, sir. We all wanted to tell you how very sorry we... Thank you, Nisbet. We hoped you didn't think we was familiar sending that wreath, but she was such a lovely young lady. Yes. We couldn't help feel really sad. Well, to work. Time is a great healer, though. Get me Renfield's chart. Yes, sir. I sometimes fancy mad people can tell us things if we only had the lingo. Well, I'm sure Renfield ain't so green as his cabbage looking. <laughs> his chart, oh, sir. Thank you. Now leave me with my patient. Oh, right, sir. Dr. Stewart, <coughs> excuse me, but it's time for me to love you and leave you. Time to say toodle pep au revoir, or should I say adieu, arrivederci, if you'll just arrange for the old trousers and top coat to be returned to me forthwith. I'll be off good and sharpish. Uh -huh. He wants me to be an instrument of evil, but I've changed my tune, and him not one to take no for an answer. He is at hand. At hand? At throat he is. Next door, next week, upstairs, downstairs, and in my lady's chamber. So... As I don't want to be party to any of that, I'll just be off, all right? Mr. Renfield, you are detained here for your own safety, and the safety of others. You are a paranoid schizophrenic with alternating homicidal and suicidal faces. And Zufagius, to boot, how is the old diet? Still crunching up those tasty blue bottles? Flies. Get not a doctor. I'm not wanting to talk fizzing trivia with you, don't you understand? And yet, once upon a time, once upon a time, flies were your sole interest. So? What do you want to talk about flaming souls for? I don't want no fizzing soul. Life's all I want, and I will have all the life I need. I don't want nobody's soul on my conscience, Doctor. Nothing in a soul to eat or... Oh. Or what? Drink? Eat or drink? Why won't you say the word? Why are you afraid of being burdened with a soul? Why are you so sure you will have all the life you need? Who has promised it to you? Answer me! You! Uh, uh. Madame Mina, thank you for your patience at this most distressing time. Uh, thank you too, Mr. Harker, for all you have told me of your stay with Count Dracula. But I feel there is something more. Dr. Van Helsing, I've told you everything I know. Oh, of course, but there is always more. And to find that, I would like to hypnotize you. Hypnotize? It's quite safe, I assure you. But how can that help? You have told me all that your conscious mind remembers. But what about your subconscious? I'm having me tea. I'll deal with you in a minute. You want me to go? Relax, drink water. Have your tea. There's nothing in here that won't wait. Yeah, that's true. Renfield's not much bothered these days, is he? Not that we can depend on it. Just be thankful he's finished with all that spider and fly nonsense, yes. eh? I don't know why I buy this bloody paper. Fly nonsense as usual. Listen to this. 
Blue for lady. What's that then? You tell me. Paper boy Tommy Deakins, aged seven, was last night the third victim since the mystery attack on 12-year-old flower seller Polly O'Donnell of Leicester Square. Flower seller? I blame the parents. All three were found in the morning on Hampstead Heath with strayed wits, small wounds in their necks mm. and a story about wanting to go play with the blue for lady. I ask you, drink water. How did they make them up? I lie back, I wait. Wait. Ton wait. I lie. She light. As a feather. Yes. I want her. Her breath. Sweet. Mm. Too sweet. Thick cloy. Blood cloy. Blood is thicker than... No. Sharp teeth she's about to fasten. I'm afraid to look, cannot raise my eyelids. I look out, I look under, I see, I see perfect Lucy. Lucy, not Lucy. She whispering, I am 600 years old. I am thousands of years old. I'm not just a little girl. Oh, Mina, back to Mina, must free me. He, his coffin on him, the key, yes, bloated, bloated, filthy leech, him lying sated, my hand in his pocket, Mina, I have the key, I'll scale the castle wall, I'll come. Jonathan, you will remember everything, everything you have told us. Alpha, beta, gamma, waking. One, two, three, four, five. You are awake. You are with your friends. We thank you for your courage. It's true. God help me, it's all true. Oh yes, it's true. <laughs> and now, dear friends, we know who our enemy is, who we must destroy, and where we may destroy him. Carfax. I cannot believe in vampires. He throws no shadow. In the mirror he makes no reflection. He has power over the wolves, the strength of ten men or more. <laughs> Now we see how the evil is come among us, in a mist which he creates out of himself, or as moonlight rays of elemental dust like those evil brides in Castle Dracula. Oh. How could you, Jonathan? What? With my sister. Oh, Mina. Mina, I went through hell to get back to you. No, don't touch me. Arthur. No, Jonathan. What, you too? My friends, forgive. When you forgive, then we have each other. And our enemy has nothing to match that. With all his hellish powers, he is not free. He may not enter anywhere unless first his host shall invite him in. Yet ever after, he is in and out as he please. No! Arthur, he tricked her. No fault, no flaw. A natural thing. The touch of the moon on her skin, the dark kingdom of sleep, opening her to things sweet daytime reason says she must resist. At such times, mere virtue alone cannot be proof against his power. His almighty power. Not almighty. No. And you think you'll win with garlic and a crucifix? These are the things which so afflict him that his every power shrivels. A stake in the heart, a cut-off head, and that's uh. how we make him true dead. Only then can this dissolve him, the consecrated wafer. These are the rules. Come dawn, he must lie low all day in his coffin, shamming death. And remember, wolf, black dog, bat, a choking fog. He can yeah. only change shape in the darkness, and we can yes. only ever kill him in the light. We do not know why these things are so, but they are so. And we will prove it to him, perhaps this night, God willing. Madame Mina, I want you should go to bed now and rest. No. My God, what more is there? We will leave you here protected by every most ancient charm and good so that nothing, no one, can cause you harm unless you yourself overturn it by asking him in. You understand? But can you promise that Mina will be safe? With such ancient protection there can be no danger. Then why is my sister dead? He takes her when she is all unconscious. 
He sucks secretly at her, stealing from her sources she does not even know that she possesses. But you know. And if knowing alone does nothing to protect you, then the garlic and the crucifix will. Mina, my darling, I... Keep away from me. The good God made this pain for a purpose. You have read the newspapers? Newspapers? The blue for lady. Oh. Good. Then we arm ourselves and go. This lurid fantasy of the purple press. I thought we were rational men. These small holes, minor wounds in the throats of these tiny victims, such as might be made by a rat or a small dog. Are you saying these were made by the same as made the holes in my Lucy? Oh, no. It is worse. Far worse. In God's name, what do you mean? Arthur, the holes were made by your Lucy. <laughs> there was a young girl of none head. Oh, what can her coffin have led? It's cosy enough, she remarked enough, but I wasn't aware I was dead. <laughs> <laughs> Our Father, our Father, which art in now and now and at the hour of my death. Oh God help me. Oh God help me, I have forgotten how to pray. I stand here, Renfield, me, your true friend, saner than I ever was in all my life, you must believe me. You are a woman. You have to make them listen. He has come among us. He can kill us all. You have to make them see. Yes. Tell me what to do to save us all. Listen to me. Tell them. The blood is the life. That was my motto. I am myself an example of a man who had a strange delusion to wit. I fancied life to be a perpetual entity infinitely prolongable by the consumption of multitudes of living things, no matter how low on the scale of hierarchical creation. No, but no, now, Mr. Renfield, no, no, no. it ain't polite to disturb nice ladies in their night attire or their private chambers. No, 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 stay away, both of you. I need to talk Let to me. Let me you. No, 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 take water. Don't so. take me. Sweet lady, you, you must listen. He has come among us. He has come among us. Sorry if he caused you alarm, Mrs. Harker. He's madder than a broom covered of brushes, but I doubt if he's armful in any way. Not to us ladies, if you get my drift. I'll report this course in the morning, and there'll be trouble, don't you worry. Men of science, crawling among cobwebs, nailing crude crucifixes on every cupboard door, crumbling communion wafers in every corner like mothballs in a wardrobe, and now loitering in a freezing graveyard. Were it not so pathetic, it would be ludicrous. Arthur, I tell you, I know that it's true. But I don't doubt for a minute the reports are true. We have an epidemic here, all right. The contagion of hysteria, and we are party to it. Grown men! Now, this is no simple girlish hysteria, my friend. Vampires exist. Vampires exist where men believe them to. You ask me if such phenomena occur, I say yes, beyond question. Ask me if they're supernatural, I say no. I... Oh! Uh, what is it? They're coming towards us, floating to... No, this cannot be. Yes, Lucy. Oh, and a child too, but... The blue fur lady. Come, come with me, to me, my arms are hungry for you, leave these I, others and I, come to me, my husband, come. Yes. Jonathan, the crucifix. Yes. Look on this. <laughs> 
this girl here? Is she? Uh, there is no harm in her. She is safe now. Shush, shush. Bad dreams, darling. Jonathan, take care of her. Yes. Come on. No, no, it's all right. Okay. Right. Right. Arthur, listen to me. That was not your Lucy. She said to me, come. That was not her, but a foul being in her form. As long as this undead exists, your sweet Lucy's soul shall never have peace. Tell me, am I to proceed with my work? Oh, I... Tell me, Arthur. No, please. You want me to drive a stake through her heart. For pity's sake, Van Helsing. And so the evil chain begins to forge itself, Dr. Seward. The contagion spreads. Listen to me. At dawn, we shall make your lover true dead. And every little child she sucked will recover. As yet, she caused no death. So Lucy adds not even one fledgling vampire to the foul horde. And I promise you she shall sleep in sweet peace as she deserves. Am I to proceed? Yes. God help me. Yes. Where is she? Gone. Far from here tonight. But come dawn, she will be back. Asleep, the living dead inside this tomb. <laughs> You will hammer home that stake and kill her truly dead. So she shall never rise again. Tomorrow, in the light of day, when we return, Arthur, yours shall be the hand that restores Lucy to us. For now, we must see this child safe. I can change my form, but you did not know I can change my voice, too. And as for Renfield here, such a docile pet when chained and gagged, aren't you? Oh, but also useful. He snuffles out the garlic and foul herbs for me, throws them away, and turns upside down the crucifix. Enemy, Van Helsing, tax on your door. God help me! God forgive me! You puny fool! Mina! Miss Mina, what? Oh, my Lord. Ah, Flory. Looks a bit pale these days. Carrying something? Or so a little bird told me. Come tomorrow night, my flower. You'll be ready for the plucking. Hmm, lovelier than Lucy, and twice as full of life. Mina! Ah, yes. I've been keeping her company. While her husband is out, him and his friends pitting their wits against me. But now, Mina, you must drink of me. To, of my life giving blood here where I wound myself come put your lips and drink drink One 
love them, but shall minister to your needs. You will love me for the love they all shall spill for you. And now when my brain says, come to you, you shall cross land or sea oh, to do my bidding. Too late. Too late. He's gone. Dracula. Oh, oh, God help me. Oh, Jonathan. He wanted him. I... I... Jonathan, go to her. Help her. Love your living wife. I saw how she wanted him. I cannot... Poor, brave Renfield. He tried to resist. Flory. Flory, tell me, did he touch you? No. Thank God. Listen, everyone, tomorrow we begin to fight him. I'm cursed. I'll kill myself. No. Mina Harker, you must not die. If you die before he is made true dead, you will become undead as he is. <sighs> Madame Mina, forgive me. Arthur, help me lay her on the bed. Uh, is she... Uh, she has only fainted in a minute. Dark. It's all dark in my box. What box? Mina. Alpha, Beta, Gamma, you will tell us where he is. For God's sake, have you no mercy? Hush! This is matter of life and death. More so. Mina, where are you? Dark, deep asleep in the dark of my box, sated and snoring off the glut of last night's successes, for we drank deep of each other, sweet Jonathan, rocked on the waters by the little lapping waves. Wrap yourself in furs, oh, my enemies. Stock up with fat provisions because my wolves are hungry. Van Helsing, better find your sea legs. Waking, you will remember nothing. One, two, three. God help me. What is happening to me? <laughs> Thank you, Count Dracula. My enemy, my friend. You help me. Your blackest cards on the table make it easy for us all to understand exactly what we have to do. Are you mad? He fears us. He fears us? Oh, yes. More than we can imagine. Where is he? You know where he is. Mina, you fainted. It was dawn and you were unconscious. Dawn? You did not know what you said. Lying. Lying with him, sated and snoring. That was not Mina. Where was I? On a ship. Van Helsing oh, yes. Sand. We have put him to flight. Remember, he must be carried over water, or he cannot cross. We found no trace of his foul coffin in the cellars of Carfax, because already it is cargo and curse to some unsuspecting merchant ship. But we don't know which ship, which port. But we know where he is going. Back to his castle. Where he can wait out the centuries. We have to go there and stamp him out. <laughs> Stop the infection at its source. Brave man, Arthur. Van Helsing, I'm terrified. Good. Then let your true terror give you courage. To be brave is to recognize the peril and the necessity. We go. <laughs> Gentlemen, get ready. But I am coming too. Blindfold me to take me on the journey in case, without me knowing, I betray all of us to him. Van Helsing, if you hypnotize me, I can go into him. No, Mina. I can tell you where he is. No. Oh, yes, my friend. All four of us okay. together. Kill you all. If first we have to batter down the gates of hell, then we will smash through and kill him so we all, all can live. But first, come, Arthur. Daylight is high already. We must return to the graveyard. 
and I must act in love for my Lucy. Courage, dear Arthur. By your loving hand will you give her sweet release. Lucy, my darling, forgive me. A single stroke through the heart. <laughs> By your loving hand. <sighs> All these weeks in the dark with those I loved, traveling blind. My other senses told me I was on a train, but behind my eyes I was on the open seas. You fed me oranges. I smelt the peel, spat out the pips, but all the time I tasted blood. You comforted me in my cabin while all along I sped in a black coach behind a dark driver who whipped six black horses faster than the wind, and the wheels hardly bumped on rutted roads. And when you, my husband, held me tight and tethered to the earth in strange bed after strange bed, while you slept, I flew wild and free in the night. We will kill him and set you free. And if we fail, I'll come with you. I won't let you go into the dark alone. It's no use, Professor. The door's locked fast. Put me against it. Here. Now stand back. Come, let us enter. It will be dawn soon. So, old enemy, you have pursued me till I have caught you. Jonathan, the crucifix. Look on this and on this. <laughs> Pretty one, pretty one. Oh, yes. My darling, I knew that you would come. Oh. You fiend. Lucy, my love, I'll kill him. Arthur, wait. The door. <laughs> you foolish man. You think your little knife can harm me. To me, your neck is like a dried stick. And thus, it snaps. Lucy. Hush, darling one. Later you can feast on his sweet flesh. Too late, Count Dracula. The dawn. No. No. Help me. The stake. Remember, Jonathan, a single stroke through the heart. Yes. <laughs> But those other fiends. His three vile brides. All in good time, my friend. Without their master, they cannot escape. For now, take each other's hands. And let us rejoice in life and in your love for each other. Mina. Jonathan. You wanted him? Yes. You wanted her. That bride? Yes, I did. I wanted them all. In the name of him who gave his all for you, the best and truest friend any of us will ever know, I tell you to forgive. And God be our witness. When we killed Dracula, true dead, it was an act of mercy and not of hate. I hate him yet. If I could send his soul to burning hell ten times over, then I would. 
He who wrought all this misery is the saddest case of all. Whose victim was he that he made us suffer so? Remember, husband, until today's sweet release, she was likely some day to need such pity. Forgive. Count Dracula is dead. Long live Mina and Jonathan. May God forgive all his poor creatures, the living and the dead.